Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to be drawing and painting this lovely rose hip. So I've got lots of rose hips on here. This is a climbing one out of the garden which is absolutely covered in these rose hips at this time of year. So when you're doing something like this it's a good practice for observational drawing and for making you look at an object or whatever it is you're doing so you don't feel you need to do this just pop into your own garden and get a little bit of something that you can have a go at drawing and really get your eye in there and have a look at all the detail. So with something like this you don't need to slavishly make sure that you've got the exact number of um, hips or the exact number of leaves it's more about getting the character of the plant and making it look like it is a rose and nothing else so you need to look at what makes this look like a rose so obviously the very distinctive shape of the hips themselves and the colour there and look at these nice little um, twiggly bits you've got on the end there I'm hoping that the camera's focusing on them so these are the kind of things you want to be drawing to get the character in the shape of the leaves is quite distinctive and you've got quite a serrated edge on those and obviously things like the little prickles there so you've got to look for the character in what you're drawing and get the form right but not worry too much about it looking like this exact little branch that you've got here because you know nobody afterwards when they look at your drawing is going to know that you missed a leaf off and in fact quite often you do want to leave things out or add extra things you might want to add an extra leaf you might want to take some leaves out just to make the shape of your drawing look better and to make a better composition so don't just think about slavishly copying things think about the picture that you're creating so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do this quite loosely and freely using a pen. You could use pencil if you wanted and be a little bit more detailed and take more time. Um, I'm just going to look at the shapes. So obviously they're quite an oval shape. Um, and some of that shape will be picked up better when we put the detail in with the colours because by changing the colours and catching the highlights that's going to make that shape, um, 3D shape of that oval kind of um, wash hip. That one's actually a bit soft, I shouldn't have touched that, it's, it's going a bit squishy. Um, yeah, so look at the shapes of those, look at the shapes of the leaves and if you look at them they've all got the same number on there. So we've got two smaller, two slightly bigger and then this one at the end and that's exactly the same actually that's only got, that's got one less. But in general these ones are the same and if you look here we've got holes in now if you wanted to you could leave those in and give it some character because at this time of year when this plant's been growing all summer it's bound to have little bits and chips and things in and again that's going to add to the character but if you don't like that if you you would prefer your leaves in your picture to have no holes then just ignore them and pretend they're not there again it's going brown at the tip so you might want to put that in and that's going to start and give us that autumny late summer autumny feel if you had these really nice and fresh and green and perfect with the hips they perhaps wouldn't go together because we know that these come out later in the summer and in autumn and you by that time you're not going to have perfect leaves so i'll go ahead now and do an ink drawing and then i'll come back and chat to you when i put some color on this Still, and you are 
here with me A house upon the hill And a little apple tree The sun is shining through Every window pane It's bathing you in light So why should I complain? Should ever be a storm or a pouring rain With a look out through the window pane Where the sun will shine on As you can see I've kept that quite simple, I've just included two of the rose hips. You could go on and do a much larger paint picture painting, um, obviously I just wanted to do it quite quickly for you. Um, the paper that I'm using is this Bockingford block, the great thing about this is it's gummed all the way around. So that's a £140 one um, in weight and that's a not pressed or cold pressed paper so just to, to let you know what I was using there okay and the ink pen I used was a pit pen and it was the fine one I think when you're doing things like um, flowers and leaves and things they're very delicate some of the time so you want to use a fine liner you don't really want to use a big chunky pen when you're doing that it depends on your style but I think for something quite fine for your pen work like I said earlier you could do that in pencil if you wanted so the watercolors that I'm going to use are the Sennelier travel set you, those of you that follow me on Instagram might have seen me using this quite a bit these last few weeks when I've been taking part in the 25 sketches in 25 days this is the one that I take out and about with me as you can see I've used it quite a lot this year and it's all very messy um, but the thing about this is it's got some lovely bright colours in so although the colours are changing and we're going into autumn I wanted to make a bright picture so I'm going to emphasise some of those colours um, and we've got some really nice reds in here. The good thing about this particular subject is you've already got the green and the red. Now green and red are on the opposite side to each other on the colour wheel which means the contrasting colours so they really set each other off and make a really bright poppy picture. So the good colours to use together, so something that just uses green and red is going to make a really pleasing picture colour wise. So that's something for you to remember. Now if we do look at the hips they do vary a little in the shades of the red, some a little areas are darker and some are quite orangey. So but to begin with I'm going to start and do the leaves first. So I'm not going to mix my own green I don't think, I'm going to use one of the ones that's in the set here. So I'll use the darker one there, I do have it written down the names of these somewhere but if you want to know I will look that up afterwards and what I sometimes do is I add a little bit of red to the green to make it a more natural colour so with one of your reds if you add that into the green because it's on the opposite side of the colour wheel it just knocks it back and makes it look a little bit more natural and the other colours we've got in there I think we need a lighter green as well so I will use some of that lighter green that I've got made up got ready made here you could mix your own greens I'm just doing this for ease and when I'm out and about sketching I don't mix the colours much so a lot of my sketches you'll notice are quite bright compared to what the colours might be naturally and again I will pop a little touch of red into that green and also on the tips of the leaves we've got some brown and we've got some yellow where things are changing so let's have a look at some brown so I'll use the sienna and add some umber into it to make it a little bit darker. The sienna is a richer colour, makes it nice and warm. Because we want a warm bright painting really. So you can exaggerate the colours and you can change them. I'm not going to mix some yellow because it's just on the tip so what I'll probably do is just brighten the leaves with the yellow straight from the pan. 
So I'll tackle these one at a time and some of them are facing backwards and on the back of the leaf it's much lighter so we'll have to think about what to do there. But of course with watercolours they dry lighter so don't forget they're drying about 50% lighter than you put them on. So if you want it to be much darker you're going to have to think about that when you make up your mixes. So I've just painted up to the edge with the green and then put the brown in on the end there. Perhaps a little bit too much. I'm just teasing it around and if you've got areas that are too wet you can just suck that up with a dry brush. And if you did want to add some yellow straight from the pan you could do at this stage because there is just some touches of yellow. Because that paint is thicker than what you've already got on there it's not going to to make a mess. So your greens and your brown want to be the similar consistency to each other when you're working wet in wet like that. So I'll go ahead and do all the leaves in a similar way using the two greens, the brown and a little touch of yellow straight from the pan and then we'll get a nice bit of variety in the leaves. There comes a time As you can see the paint's already starting to dry there and you can see that the lines of the pen are really showing through nicely so when you do an ink and watercolour or as we like to call it an ink and wash just don't put your paint on too heavily keep plenty of water in your mixes so that you've got your drawing showing through because that's where the character of this rose hips coming from is from the actual drawing itself as well as the colours so now if you look at the stems of these and this is true with a lot of plants the stems tend to have um, a little bit of color in them you'll find on white plants things with white flowers the, the stems can be completely green but on most if they've got a little touch of red in it's an indication that the flower is probably going to be pink or red so with roses you'll often get a little touch of red in the stem so I'm going to do the stems now and we need to make some reds up because obviously we're going to be using those for the um, flowers themselves so like I said before we've got sort of a nice rich red more of a um, an alizarin really this set came with quite a lot of reds in it. It seemed to have a disproportionate amount of reds compared to other colours. So I did actually swap one out. Um, I did do a review on it when I first got it. But they are absolutely gorgeous, the colours that come in this set. Um, and I'll put more of a, an orangey red. So we've got two 
different reds there that will mix together nicely on the paper to give us those shades and really we do need a bit of a shadow mix to go into that to drop into it whilst it's wet so we need to make that up quite thickly we want it to be thicker than these two mixes and I'll make that out of the dark red and that nice dark green any shadow colour it's a good way to make it is to have to use I've put too much green in there is to use the colours from the opposite side of the colour wheel it makes you a really nice shadow colour so a good shadow colour for the red is to mix the green into that. So it looks very dark at the moment but we're using that quite sparingly. So I'll go ahead and do the stems. So for those all I'm going to do is do them green and then drop a little bit of red into them. The thorns are more of a brown colour. So drop some of the reds sparingly into that and pop a little bit of that brown on where those, those thorny bits are and just leave the colours to mix on the paper don't be starting to try to tease them about I'm not going to put any colour up there I don't think it needs it this bit here wasn't really a leaf that was more where the um, I don't know what you call it the covering for them before they came out was left. A little bit of that darker green and again a touch of the red and you can pop some of the browns in because it's not a solid block of colour You can just tease it along a little bit. Oh, and I've missed a bit. Look here, this is the the same as this part here. This is like a covering kind of a leaf for that stem where the leaf comes off where it's attached. That looks better with that filled in. And I will just pop a little bit of yellow in there because it's catching the light. It's quite a bright area. When you're doing something like that, this, you don't really need lots of highlights. You're going to keep the colour simple and let the paper shine through. So the end parts um, are brown, but they're a bit darker in places. So I'll just mix some brown, more brown up. Keep it nice and thick. So that's the sienna and the umber mixed together. And this area here is quite dark. Again, because these areas are old and twisted and they've been weathered and damaged. We perhaps should leave this little area to dry before we put the reds on the hip itself. And that shadow colour that we made, I'm just going to lift a little bit of that up and just pop it in in places just so that we've got a bit of a feeling for light and shade where it's twisting around there and that will dry a little bit lighter but those areas really are dark compared to the rest of the plant so I'll just leave that to dry a little moment before I put those reds on okay now the browns and the greens are all dry we can put those reds on so I'm going to start with the lighter of those two reds and just fill the whole cover the whole of that hip with that colour you might want to leave a little highlight where the lights catching on the top of it again that will help with the getting your 3D effect leaving the highlight there so if you just leave that little area of dry paper when you put your other colours on top they're not going to flow into that area because the paper's dry so that's the easiest way of, of doing a highlight. Of course, you can lift them out, lift the colour out afterwards to make a highlight, but red's not the easiest colour to lift out. Okay, so that's a nice orange light colour. And then we're going to put the darker of the two reds and look carefully now at where it's darkest and where the light's catching things. And that's going to help pick up the shape.
and of course you've got shadows made from the leaves and don't make the whole thing too dark. Like I said earlier we want it to be a nice bright picture we don't want to make it dark at all. And then with that really really dark shadow colour just under here where it's going to be absolutely the darkest where we've got the shadow from the end there you can pop that colour in but don't overdo it with that but it just helps to give it a little bit more shape and then I'm going to get some of the yellow again straight from the pan and here it's just looking a touch more on the yellow side so there's a lot of colour in these hips when you start really looking at them from orange through to deep red and you could actually spend all day really looking at that and doing a very detailed study so again we'll do exactly the same thing on the other one this actually is quite a lot lighter the one that I'm looking at again I've altered the composition I've just looked at these two hips and the leaves that are around those and ignored everything else on this little branch that I've got so again get the second colour and look at where the colours change now some of this is where it's a little bit blemished some of it's where it's more in shade so it's quite varied really There isn't many really dark areas on this one but there's just some blemishes along here which you'll see I did have in with the, the pen itself. And I'm going to just take a little bit of highlight out there. I didn't, if you do it when it's still wet you can see it's much easier to do. So you get a different feel for your highlight. This one's quite a crisp highlight and this is more subtle so again that depends on your style and how you want to do it and again I'm just going to use a little bit of the yellow it's quite yellow under here straight from the pan a lovely bright yellow this one and I use it a lot okay so I'm going to call it a day at that I'm just looking here, I've not really got it attached properly, I'll just, that's better. Um, so I just popped a little bit of green into there. So for me that's enough for this little study, um, and it is just a study, it just makes you look really, it makes you look at that individual plant and what makes it special and unique and different to other plants that you might have in the garden. Um, and think about drawing things from different angles as well, so I drew that from that angle so that we could see the top of that, we didn't want to like, ignore that and not see all that. Um, sorry, I'm just trying not to get bits on the paint in there. So draw them from different angles, they look quite different from above or from the side. So just move things around a bit and look at them from all directions. <sighs> just blowing some bits off there. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me today. So I hope you found that useful. Just remember to keep your colours nice and light to let that drawing shine through. If you've got any comments or questions, if you want to pop those down below, I will get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, do enjoy your own painting and drawing and I'll be back with you again soon with another tutorial or demonstration. Thanks for watching and bye bye for now.